the Book of Remembrance of Enoch, Chapter 9, Tablet of Bedal, the story of Enoch and Edney, the account of that which transpired with Enoch in the lair of his old father, Yatsikad. And it came to pass that after Enoch looked and saw with Urim the council in heaven that made the determination to establish Yod, he went rejoicing back down to the place of his abode, as it has been written, and after a year passed, he determined to return to the cavity of the rock where he had been. And after all was ready, he took his journey again eastward, and he made his way to the encampment where he had stayed and used the Urim, and there again he slept the night in the cavity of the rock. And when it was light, he awoke, and he lay still pondering all of that which he had seen the visit before. And again the loving presence of Moza drew near, and the Lord said, Enoch, my son, do you know where you are? And Enoch looked about, and he said, No, Lord, except in a rock of the eastern hill country. And the Lord said, This is the camp of Masila, for it is the place where sin first found an opening, to enter into the lives of men, and it is the old camp of Gabriel, my loved one, when he lived in Eden. And upon hearing this, Enoch was greatly moved, and he stood up and he examined everything. Reference number 122. I saw that Hava's grinding stone was still there, and Enoch knew that it was the one used to make the first Kelly bread, and he left it there. And he said to the Lord, Lord, this is wonderful. How is it that I found my way here? And the Lord said, I summoned you here and bid you bring the Urim once again so that I could reveal to you the way back to Eden. And this camp of Yatsikad and Hava, which is now temporal, will be element to aid you in your understanding. Look with me and bless your old father, Yatsikad. And it came to pass that Enoch waited until the high sun of the day shone brightly into the cavity of Masila. And Enoch began to see, and the Lord said, Look and know my son, Ayalak, the kind of people it was who begat you, for it is for a wise and urgent purpose that I show you these things. And Enoch was obedient, and he sought to understand the desires of the Lord, for he loved him greatly. And before his face there appeared Yatsikad and Hava, as seen by Urim, or that is to say, as viewed through the eyes of the Lord, and his eyes were open to see, and he saw that Yatsikat and Hava were utterly pure in heart, and they were very mild and gentle in all their manner, and they had no thought of glorifying themselves, and for this reason it was almost impossible for Semihaza to tempt them. And their minds dwelt on no thoughts of misfortune or trials that lingered from their upbringing, and they had no bad memories from any of their days as the children of Eden, and they had no desire for possessions of wealth. And neither did they view creation as a source to satisfy them in rising above their fellows in the things they used in their daily lives. And they both were utterly harmless and did not think to gain any advantage over their fellows. Neither did they look down on them in the midst of any misfortune, and most importantly, all during their long lives, they had no capacity to anticipate evil, and when confronted with it, they were always surprised and dismayed, for they thought continuously only upon that which is good with holiness of heart. And they could divide with clear distinction between when they sinned and when they were forgiven. And this was so because they always walked in the ways of the dominion which they had been given. And because of this, it was easy for the Erko to show to bring them a knowledge of their sin and forgiveness. And Enoch could see by the power of the spirit called Kahi, as he looked with Aram, that they walked with perfect harmony in the midst of creation, insomuch that any form of complaint was far from them, and they offended not one of the sons of heaven, and their lips were not heard to murmur before Anarchist or before the watchers. And they understood the Erko de Shoy, and they communed with them like a gentle shepherd. And in this way, they had sweet communion one with the other, and they exercised their rich dominion of instructing them and guiding them in the way. And they both knew nothing, doubting that they were rightly charged with the task of that dominion. And they knew that they stood with complete authority 
in their expression of virtue to influence all creation for good and to instruct the sons of heaven in their rightful ways. And they accepted and accomplished their dominion as one of their joys of living. And they had repented hearts all the day long. And they loved Mozart the Lamb with a deep love and had a longing to be with him. And their humility was great. And Enoch could see that they counseled with the Lord in all their doings. And they thought all their thoughts to him. And thus they prayed without ceasing. And Enoch beheld that the righteousness of his first parents exceeded anything he had ever known. And as Enoch looked, he felt the strong desires of Yaatzikad and Hava to return to Eden. And the heart of Enoch was greatly moved upon with compassion as he viewed the loneliness of his first parents. And he knew that their greatest longing was to return there. And he said to the Lord, When shall I see and know the way back to Eden? And the Lord said, Look at what is now before your eyes. And Enoch said, Open my eyes, O Lord. And it came to pass that the Lord said, Little son, herein lies the mystery of the way back to Eden. Remember that I revealed to you the first great seventy, and of how the righteousness, reference number one, two, three, God sees perfect virtue to give rise to perfect righteousness. And holiness of the first seven generations is built into the fabric and personalities of all of the souls in creation. That kind of righteousness and purity and holiness is the pathway back to Eden. And all of the holy ways of righteousness in these seven generations are the exact manner of behavior that open the portal and pathway between the oaks of Pathak to enter once again into Eden. And all of the Urko Deshoi, because they have chosen to pattern the nature of their beings after men who are the righteous objects of creation, they also have built into the nature of their beings the way back to Eden. And the purity and holiness and the excellent virtue of your first parents comes to the Urko Deshoi in a form which they can understand and take delight in. And the Urko Deshoi see their purpose to be to unfold to their loved ones a knowledge of these things. And now, my son, will you tell your old father, Yatsukad, for me that the way back to Eden is built into the fabric of his soul? And our father, Anarchist, only waits to take him there until the seven generations are completed. And it came to pass that Enoch was filled with joy for his father, Yatsukad, and he was filled with the presence of the Lord. And Enoch was transfigured before him, and Mozart the Lamb stood before Enoch in the brilliance of his light. But Enoch did not perceive him to have flesh and blood, but he had the form of a man to him. And Enoch knelt upon his knees and he said, O oh my father and my guide, all that I am is yours. And may I be given to bless you during all of my days. Please forgive me and help me to serve you in all that you desire of me. And please help me, O oh Lord, to discover and correctly distinguish the righteous ways of my fathers so that I can help you to establish Yod and reveal to the righteous the way back to Eden. Please forgive me and help me to know how to reprimand the watchers who are destroying the lives of men, which results in your loved ones not being able to dwell with you. And please help me to overcome all that stands in the way to impede my father Yadzikot from going home once again. And it came to pass that the Lord began to instruct Enoch, and he said, Enoch, my son, you must prepare a place of safety and refuge for the righteous, for you have been given the task of establishing a sure dwelling place for them, so that they may walk in perfection of way. And the place you shall establish shall have three names. First it shall be called Mawin, because it is my abode, and the place where I may live with man, and the Erko Deshoi, and it shall be called Yahad because of the sweet effect of our yod in the lives of the people of Anakis who dwell together in community. And the Erko the Shoi shall call the place Bethel, reference number 124, Zion, the community, and the temple were all the same place originally. And it is the abode of the sweet things of life and of the true encampment of the great Holy One. And it is meant to be a resting place from cruelty for the handiwork of his loving kindness. 
reference number 125. I saw that the declaration of Shabuot was the most dramatic event known by the house of Israel after the flood. And it occurred upon a mountain the wicked call Hermon. But the mountain was known as Mount Zion to the early Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 48 because it was to them a beacon of declaration for Shavuot, and some men of power among them wanted to enhance the importance of their temple, so they applied the term Mount Zion to it. But the original name for Zion was Mawing. It means the abode of God, of man and the animals. It is a lair, house, and a temple. See Strong's number 4583. A retreat from the world. See also Strong's number 6726, number 6725, number 5329, and number 5331. And it came to pass that as I looked with Urim, I saw and heard the instructions of our lovely Moza, which he gave to Enoch as he stood before him. And Moza the lamb drew a pattern in the dirt with a stick as he was talking, and he said, Teach the people after the manner that I will show you, and write of that which you see here upon a stone, and it shall be carefully preserved among the righteous as something that is holy, and you shall not reveal the interpretation of it to those who know not my Father, and you shall use the stones of the earth in this way, to instruct your children and as many as will humble themselves before me, who are willing to follow after the desires of Anarchists. And that which you write upon stone shall be handed down from one generation to another among my people so that there may be peace in the earth. Reference number 126. This is the reason for scripture to be established, far different than the effects of the world's scriptures today. And it came to pass that the Lord said, It is given to all of the children of men to choose how they will in the leading of their lives, and they can go this way or that way. And to men it seems that there are many ways they can choose, but before the great Holy One in heaven, there are but two congregations that men may choose to walk in. The one is holy and full, the other is corrupted and empty. And the pathway leading to the holy congregation or to the corrupt congregation is clear and can be known by all people. Ma'in is the name of the congregation of the community of holiness. Because Anarchist and man and the Erico de Choy all lived together there with a fullness of life and loving kindness. And Senacio, reference number 127, pronounced Senacio, is the name of the congregation of the community of wickedness, because it is the hateful world of the dead. And they speak ill of Anarchists there. And the exercising of the power of godliness in common is the spirit of the congregation of Ma'in. But sin and avarice in common are the spirits leading the troubled people of the congregation of Senacio. The one brings rich happiness and life. The other brings great fear and sadness and death. And know, my son, that in the task of establishing Yod and the community of the righteous called Ma'in, there are many obstacles, for all the forces of evil are against it, and there are many false spirits and the Nephilim are the foremost among them. And they have gone out into the world to deceive, and great care must be taken to stay on the pathway toward the loving kindness of our Father. And it is the power of godliness established in Eden by Anarchus that leads his loved ones to him. And in all that opposes the righteous, there are great powers of holiness that will sustain them and deliver them and guide them in the way to overcome all of the forces of evil. For the holy city Ma'in will become a living soul in the midst of creation and in the very presence of Anarchist, and it will practice compassion for itself according to the life which it has been given. Be not amazed that it must also be seen to be a living soul by all of the righteous, for as a living soul, Ma'in will act together with the Erkota Shoi to protect and sustain the righteous who dwell in her. And I say that because for Ma'in to prosper and become the means of leading the righteous of Yod back to Eden, it must be established in such a way so as to be a living soul, acting for itself in the midst of creation. 
and I will tell you how Ma'in can become a living soul. So listen and learn, my son, of the pathway to establishing the holy city. And Mota began to draw with his stick. Reference number 128. The following verses from 37 to 75 is the Lord's explanation of the water tablet that Enoch made by copying that which Mozart drew. And he said, When the power of godliness is applied to the lives of men, either to be much or to be little, then they become accustomed to that pattern of love, either to have it or not, in varying degrees. And he begins with the love and respect for children by the parents and family to acknowledge the worth of their souls in the sight of anarchist. And when loving kindness follows this respect, then it will nurture and uplift the righteous toward the grandeur of repentance and redemption. And because of repentance, the holiness and the completeness of virtue will grow to be strong and sure, and it is enlarged in their lives. And it is in this way that people develop their various pure expressions of virtue, and the holy people of anarchist will be found clinging to all virtue all of the time. But those who have corruption in their lives will hold to this virtue, but not to that one. And many among them will feel justified in their choosing to have this virtue, but not that one. And for these who may also love anarchists, it is important that they receive a double portion of loving kindness from their fellows to uphold them in the way until they can accomplish walking in perfection of way and they no longer select to only live by only the virtues that please them. And men and women are not alike in their pursuits of holiness and perfection of way. For when virtue is complete and it is magnified in the life of a woman, or if it is retained there from her childhood, then she forms a pure and wholesome connection with charity, and she loves things innocent and childlike. And she is drawn toward the mildness of gentle love, and she becomes tender-hearted and alive and sensitive in her feelings of joining. And she is dependable to her loved ones to always walk in the ways of the power of godliness. And when virtue is magnified to become full and complete in the life of a man, or if it is retained from his childhood, then pure righteousness results, which is a profound and tender compassion toward all of the loved ones of Anarchist and also toward the elements of creation and the watchers of heaven. And he becomes known to be dependable and diligent in his ability to provide loving kindness and in his ability and willingness to use the elements of holiness to bless and protect and nourish. Then following this, it is this relationship with either charity or righteousness that determines how the spirit is able to guide the lives of both men and women and also it will determine which spirit is guiding them in the way they will go. And it is not black or white, but the Holy Spirit Kai is heard to the degree to which completeness of virtue is attained, and virtue is attained only by repentance, and some other spirit may be acting to influence when virtue is not complete. And when a person chooses to abide by their virtue, but abandon that one, then either one spirit or the other guides them in the way. And it is according to that spirit which guides them that determines that which they feel in the feelings of their hearts. And men may feel compassion or disgust and anger or forcefulness. And women may feel joined to all things sweet and good. Or they may feel suspicious and afraid and resentful. And in turn, it is the feelings of the heart of a person that determines which congregation they walk in. And the weak and injured among the righteous lead lives that sometimes walk in Ma'in and sometimes walk in Senasio and sometimes wander in between alone and afraid and forsaken. And it is incumbent upon all of the righteous of Yod and Ma'in to be patient and kind, to show forth the power of godliness toward their fellows when these obstacles lie in their way. And the people of Ma'in will not act alone in this, as the soul of Ma'in will also act to turn itself toward them and to love them, and to gather them in, and to influence them tenderly toward walking in perfection of way. Reference number 129. God sees the function of the holy city to chiefly influence her children to be virtuous, or that is to say, a whole expression of virtue. 
and the living soul of Ma'in will act in this manner in behalf of the righteous wherever they are found and in whatsoever circumstances they may be in. And Ma'in becomes a living soul when all of the righteous abiding in her who walk in perfection away feel in common and know in common and act in common and have substance in common and decide in common and love in common and share all of the fears and joys and desires of anarchist in their hearts and lives all in common. And Ma'in thus becomes a living soul when the objects of creation and oneness who walk in perfection of way are all joined to be of one heart and mind in all of these seven things. Then they beget the soul of Ma'in and give it life. And the emergence of the soul of Ma'in is the very pinnacle of the expression of the true dominion that our father Anakis gave to man. And there is no force among the wicked that can stand against it. And this is because... The power of Ma'in arises out of the forces of loving kindness that are resident in the visions of created purpose. In the air code of that are fulfilled, and this power is accomplished by the complete joining of the righteous to huddle together in their various expressions of perfect virtue as they walk daily in the way with their loving father. But the living soul of Ma'in will turn away from all of those who are against the diligence of virtue or who do not want the labor of it. And she will turn away from all of those who, because of the lack of virtue, are cold-hearted toward creation and who act callously toward their fellows. And she will turn away from all those who despise the innocent and who abandon their children and the needs of their children before anarchists and who make jest against the unfortunate and the unknowing and the weak. For they are those who listen to the spirit of lies and doubt and denial, and they are filled with contention, insomuch that they feel lifted up above their fellows, and they create generations of those who are distant, and who look with vacant eyes, and are violent and hateful. Woe to those to whom the soul of Ma'in turns her back, for they shall have no peace, and in the end they shall be left without a remnant, and they shall inherit the fruits of their evil labors, and the consequences of their wanton desires." But joy and great happiness and a prosperous long life will come for those who cling to their knowledge of the truth and who shed abroad the loving kindness of the Father through the power of godliness. For these shall raise their little ones up to walk in the way, and then generations shall be so blessed as to walk in the way of perfect virtue, and they will lead pure and righteous lives, and they will always be led by the loving spirit of Kai, so that their men know and feel compassion, and their women are pure and delightful and wholesome in their innocence. And the soul of the holy city, Ma'in, shall turn her face toward them and open her arms to enfold them, and she will gently care for them and guide them home to the peace and wonder of the presence of Anakis. Now understand that the wicked do not have opposition from Semehaza, who is Mozart, the decadent, and this is because they act to please him and they believe in his lies, and they support his opinions and his interpretations, and they give of their labor to sustain his congregation of Sanasio. And it is known that anarchists will not oppose the wicked, for he lovingly gave them their agency. But the wicked are opposed by the fruits of their own labors, and by the Erko de Shoy, who will act upon the grief of the soul of Ma'in to subdue them. But it is the righteous who are opposed by the evil one, and by his congregation, by the soul of Ma'in, who will act to see to it, that the faithful children in her, who are diligent to be founded upon the rock of the repentance of Yod, will have their opposition be the means of strengthening them in the way of virtue and in the power of godliness. And in the end, all of their days will be led in peace, and in the harmony that is found in the midst of the presence of our father, Anarchist. But the wicked find themselves continually facing the need to fight against the powers of good and also against the powers of evil in their fellows. And their congregation is always in peril and it finds the need to be defended from decay and from the threat of being overtaken by someone stronger than they. And changing from the traditions of their fathers is a threat that consumes them in the way for they find no security in the leadings of the spirit 
but are compelled to cling to that which seemed to preserve the lives of their fathers. And in this way, they constantly find themselves vulnerable and unprepared in the face of change, and they are overtaken by events which they cannot control. Remember, my son, that above all things, when the soul of man is founded upon the rock of repentance, it leads to great happiness and redemption and freedom, and it leads to the fullness of joy here in this life. And when the soul of man does not act to be founded upon the rock of repentance, it leads to doubt and hopelessness and despair and anger and death. And any of the elements of the earth that are used by the wicked in worship or in their daily lives will in the end return to them empty and void, and it will be to their hurt. And that element will be ashamed of them before the great Holy One at the last and final day. And while they can seem to prosper for a while in the midst of their wickedness, in the end they will be left void and alone and empty of all of the pleasant delights of life that were meant to be their inheritance from their kind father, Anarchus. So it is expedient, my son, to always teach the people to be diligent to walk in the pathway of the power of godliness and perfection of way, so that in the course of their lives they may be drawn in by the loving arms of the soul of Ma'in to dwell with their father in peace. And in your my people can pattern their righteousness after the righteous of the first great seventy, and Ma'in will recognize them and claim them as her own, and I will also lay hold of them as my own treasure to have. Therefore, it is expedient upon you to begin with the establishment of Yod, and before you can put Yod in place among the righteous, a search must be made all throughout the land among the righteous to discover the righteousness that I have established among them since the beginning. And it must be decided that which will be established among all of the people and that which was meant for only the few. And this is necessary so that they can all practice in common all the holy ways of righteousness and repentance. And when they practice in common all of the worships of the holy ways, then they are able to uphold one another in perfection of way, in so much that they can purify away from all of their uncleanness and corruptions. And then also are the people of my Father protected and nurtured in their way toward the loving arms of my Father in the holy city of Ma'in. And it came to pass that as I looked with Aram, I saw that in the days of Enoch, most of the Lamb had the opportunity to establish Yod, or that is to say, his church without any of the incumbences of the traditions of men or the dogmas that arise from their seeking to rise one above the other. And our lovely Moza has thus blessed the righteous of all the generations of the end times with the knowledge of these things. And what I beheld is after this manner, the establishment of Yod allowed all of the righteous people upon the earth at that time to come together in such a way as to be joined with the ways of security and happiness. And it was a very great aid to them to prevent family groups and encampments from drifting onto forbidden paths and wandering in the wilderness or that which comes from the whims of the unknowing and from the random changes that were known to divide and scatter their families and their loved ones. And it gave them the means of instructing their children and enjoining together one generation to another in the knowledge of the Lord. And the establishment of Yod gave them all the full benefit of the knowledge of how to utilize the element of righteousness to the fullest to bring healing, and great power was seen to be at work in their righteousness, and the wicked began to greatly fear them. And I beheld that all of the passages of life were marked with righteousness in common among them, and they taught their children from the heavenly tablets, and they clothed them with righteousness, and by these things righteous parents began to have no more wicked children. And I also beheld that the wicked continued to lose some of their children to righteousness until they established harsh demands and ruled with the religion of Sanasiol. And in many ways, when the wicked discovered the righteous ways of Yod, they distorted them and put them to use to strengthen their hand against righteousness and their control over their fellows. But among those who embraced the truth and were a part of Yod, I beheld that they prayed in common and held possessions in common 
and they also found and established the elements of righteousness that were a common defense against opposition and from evil, and Yo allowed them to achieve a common mind as to the leadings and direction of the Lord to his people. And they found great benefit and much blessing to come from common confession and repentance, and they were able to empower their people with rich benefits by means of a common understanding of the use of element in their worship. And lastly, in the course of time, they found the joys and comfort of celebrating the times of the Lord and all of his holy days in common together. And it came to pass that I saw an astonishing thing to me, for I beheld that Yod also became a living soul and an identifiable spirit that had life, and it moved with effect in the midst of each soul in the holy congregation to guide and show them the way. And Yod became a living soul with a name and a vision, and it was respected in the same manner as any living soul by the holy host of heaven. And Yod was not viewed as a vehicle of power or control, but viewed in the same manner as a loved one who is respected and given their rightful place in the presence of the Lord. And as I looked with Urim, I could see that Yod expressed no authority to act to control the lives of any people, for the glory of men or for gain. And also I saw that Yod asserted no authority before the world, and it acted the same as anarchist at the judgment. But Yod was known only as the means for the righteous in community to act in common in their pursuit of repentance and perfection of way and the power of godliness. And it was the people who would not allow evil in their midst to remain. And it was the people who would stand up for walking in perfection of way. And it was the people who directed their affairs in Yod according to the leadings of the Spirit. And by the power of godliness and all of this could come about because the people of Yod found sorrow, happiness, thankfulness, learning, endurance, wisdom, and redemption all in common. And because of this, the soul of Yod was formed and it became strong. And the collective feelings of the people began to be known and openly shared in creation. And the people were identified and named by the Erko de Shoy, by the clear and strong feelings of loving kindness that followed with them and the Erko de Shoy knew Yod openly and spoke often of her among themselves. And it is the feelings of the hearts of the righteous that came to life in the midst of the Erko de Shoy that becomes the living soul of Yod. And I beheld that they had ceremonies that were filled with the presence of Anakis and his lovely Mozart the Lamb. They had ceremonies of connection where a person would be joined to their kin among the Erko de Shoy and to the needed feelings of anarchists, and rocks of witness were used for this purpose, and the element of mothers. They had ceremonies of separation from the terrible Darkardar Choi, and from the troubling effects of their teachings, and anything in creation empty of the presence of anarchists, and little sparrows were used for this, and the elements of the Marari were used by those who were guided to do so, and ceremonies of celebration where visions of created purpose were celebrated and prayed over, and the knowledge of them were rehearsed and expanded upon so that they could be known and supported by the contributions of their loved ones and set in place by the elements of Rahaviel. And they had ceremonies to strengthen prophecy, and in these ceremonies the Erkota Shoi were instructed, and a rich understanding of the will of Anarchist was brought by the use of element to them, and this was done to strengthen the fulfillment of prophecies in individual lives and in families and in the world. And they had ceremonies to gather and deliver them from Perel and strengthen the righteous and to lend them support in difficult circumstances. And the element of marriage was used for this, together with rocks of witness. And they had ceremonies of compassion where a righteous person would gather to their loved ones and worship and speak of their struggles and repentance. And they all could share support and understanding, and in this way they loved the repentance of one another. And often understanding was to come to those for whom these ceremonies were performed, and the element of anarchist was used for this. And as I heard and saw concerning these ceremonies of compassion, the Lord said to me that these worships were to be in two parts, and after understanding was accomplished, 
as to the views of Mozart the Lamb concerning the truth of the need for compassion, then that understanding was confirmed on all who were present. And they had ceremonies of welcome where those arriving in the city of Maureen felt loved and supported in all of their trials. And great was the love that was shown them. And great demands were not made of them. And they were received with much tenderness of heart. And they had ceremonies of covenants. And it was according to what the nature of the covenant was that determined what righteousness applied. Sometimes it was their hair or a reed or a staff of wood. And they had ceremonies of commission where they would send off a loved one on an errand for Mozart the Lamb or his father. And rich blessings were brought by the power of these worships and the Erekotashoi moved with firm purpose in their behalf to prepare the way before them. And they had ceremonies of apology and resolve where healings were made in breaches in families and disputes were brought to repentance. And the lofty power of godliness prevailed in these worships and the elements of Joshua. Reference number 130. God has saved. Strong's number 3091 were used to good effect. And they had ceremonies of bestowal for spiritual blessings and for gifts of power and helps. And lastly, I saw that they had ceremonies of remembrance where the purposes of the Lord were brought to bear in the midst of any misfortune or in the midst of a great thankfulness. And I saw that Yod was exceedingly strong and the wicked could not stand against it. And it empowered the people of it with a great ability to show forth the power of godliness. And it came to pass that Mozart the Lamb was very well pleased with his son Enoch. And the Lord ended his instruction to him. And Enoch was filled to overflowing with rich gratitude towards his Mozart for guiding him in the way. And Mozart handed his stick to Enoch and he departed. And it came to pass that Enoch lingered in the camp of Masila. And he did not want to leave, and the two sentinel oaks there loved him greatly, and he was the first person to visit them, since the world became temporal, and they touched him. And after some days he took his journey and went westward toward the encampment of Anawe, and all of the people there were anxiously awaiting his return. And when he arrived, they all were quiet before him, for his face shone with the light of anarchist. And during the four days which followed, encampments in the land of Anak and from the east sent listeners to hear all that he would tell them. And it came to pass that a multitude was assembled and Enoch expounded all that the Lord had shown him and he drew in the sand with the stick the drawings of Mozart that he made during his instructions and all the people rejoiced and after those days many emissaries were seen going to Anak to the camp of Anawe, and Yod began to be formed, and a strengthening was found to come to all the families of the righteous. And it came to pass that Enoch carved the drawings of Mozart upon a stone tablet, and he kept it safe, and he spent his time in Anawe, doing his labors in the harvest. And when the harvest was completed, he journeyed with his father to the winter camp of Sheleba. And as I looked with Urim, I can see a large cavity in the side of a hill in the camp of Sheleva, and it has a large opening, and there on the earth, dressed very warm, is a group of the elders of the people of Mohoya, and the elders of those who came from Rab Shalash, and also Aliyah, together with his rib, who was called Amarak, because she is the mother of tenderness, and they are assembled to plan the wedding of Enoch and Edni, and I see a flickering fire, and all the faces of the loved ones of the Lord are glowing with the light of the fire. And I saw and heard that of all the children of Yatsakad and Hava, only the descendants of Kathan performed weddings. And the wicked children of our first parents did not, neither did any of the righteous other than those descended from Kathan. And Eldra married the eldest daughter of his brother Kathan, and her name was Pathuya because of her exceeding great charity and childlike faith. And because she was the daughter of Cathan, Edra had a wedding. And Baraka was a descendant of Cathan, and Aliyah was a descendant of Edra and Pathuya. And it was in this way, because of their lineage, that it became certain that Enoch and Edni should have a wedding. But the wicked declared that Eden was a myth, and the stories of it that had been told were of no value. And some of them declared that Yatakad and Hava were not the first two people, 
for they said that there was evidence of people from long ago. And many such things did the wicked declare, so that they would have no ties to the virtues of Eden or to the repentance and righteousness of their first parents. And all of the rest of the righteous, other than those descended from Catan, did not think to have the custom of weddings established among them. But Catan, son of Yatakad, when he took his rib to wife, he declared that he would only do so by the worship of the rocks of Simca, and that is why they called a wedding. And it is in this way that these elders of the people are gathered together to plan the wedding of Enoch and Edney. And this meeting was brought about because Enoch and Edney exchanged espousal gifts, and he gave her a little fish and some hyssop, and she gave him a fig and a double acorn. Reference number 131. Espousal gifts express your desire and request for specific helps in your joining in marriage to fulfill your vision. And it came to pass that after those days, they're always seen together, and they laughed together about how they met, and Baraka gave Edney the song of the dance. And it came to pass in those days that after the gathering to plan the worship of the rocks of Simca for them, word was sent abroad to all the righteous from Edra, that all of the righteous must repent and have weddings in order to be upright in their standings before anarchists. And he said it must be so because the Lord has said that Yod must be established so that all the righteous worship in common. And for this reason, there were many visitors from the regions round about who came to witness how the worship of the rocks of Simca was performed. And so they could hear it for themselves concerning all of these things. And it came to pass that the righteous began to perform this worship in all the encampments in the land, and those who had not had weddings were blessed by the power of the element it brought to their lives when they did so. And as I looked with Urim, I could see that the righteous of that day were easily drawn to repentance because Mozart and his band had not developed the means of establishing pride among those who could not anticipate evil. And there was much enthusiasm for the establishment of Yod, for all the people supposed it may cause their families to be brought together in their pursuit of righteousness. And they all longed for the happiness that they had known in times past. And as I look with Urim, I am compelled to describe Edney, and she is very tall and thin, and her arms are long and always moving about, as though she speaks with them. And she is busily engaged in everything, and nothing escapes her notice. And when looking into her smile, it was hard to imagine anyone more trusting or selfless. She is beautiful, with long flowing auburn hair, and her smile looks very much like that of her mother, Hava. And she speaks so quietly, she can hardly be heard. She is so delightful. And it came to pass that on the day of the wedding at the rising sun, they each took their espousal gifts, and they prayed together with them on the high place of the rock. And Edra placed an element of righteousness upon them, and they gave their espousal gifts to their rock of witness as an element of remembrance. And then all in the company proceeded to the western overhang. And I saw a long procession, and there they performed the worship of the rocks of Simca. And Amorak brought the reed. And all was done in the manner that the Lord established in Eden, and Edra wept for missing Pethua. And in the years that followed, Enoch grew in his stature to be large like unto his father. And Edney was just a little taller, and I think I have never seen a man who moved with more confidence and purity of intent. And it came to pass that the elders of Shelavah discovered much of the righteousness that the Lord had given to their fathers. And all these things were held in remembrance, but the people had not yet learned how to use discretion with the truth, because they could not anticipate evil. And Enoch and Edney lived in Anaway, and their first child was born in the lair Enoch was born in, and it was a girl. And they named her after her grandmother, Pathuya, which brought joy to the heart of their old father, Edra, for she had passed away in the midst of travail. And for this reason, birthings were established after the manner of the delivery Hava did for Enoch by the elders of Sheleva under the guiding hand of Enoch, whom Mozart had given the task of establishing Yod. 
And the elders became known as the council of Sheva among all the righteous. And old Allah, son of Yatsukat, when he heard of it, joined with them together with all of his people. And he was greatly comforted in his old age, for he had endured near the borders of Towa with much long suffering. And Yod and the city of Ma'in were bright in their prospect before his aging eyes. And the element of birthing was a comfort to all of the mothers of the righteous among his people. And the use of Kelly's was also established in every home of the righteous. And the righteousness of clothing that Moza declared in Eden protected their children from going astray. And all of the women started at their 10th birthday, carried two needles in the hem of their garments. Reference number 132. See chapter 7, verse 33 through 35. And they began to mark the day that Yatsikad and Haba left Eden as a holy day, and it was their foremost day of the year. Reference number 133. In this case, the word foremost means the first day of the year or the day upon which the year is built, which is the spring equinox. And it was for them a day of mercy to celebrate the kindness of Moza, to go with them to guide them in the way. And they also marked the day that the Lamb spoke to them at their altar. And for them, it was the day of forgiveness. And on that day, they danced the song of Hava and rose up in the dance seven times. And the song was used to reestablish the dominion of the forgiven. And Enoch established altars of Ariel, and they worshiped there on the days of Gamal for their young people. And he established music and singing in their worship according to the advice of his mother, and the Urko de Shoy understood. And he was first to bring to the people the sacredness of that which was written upon the heavenly tablets. And those writings were much revered because of the truth which they bring. And they would sing a water song and drink water before they would proceed to worship or perform anything to the Lord, so that all the congregation of Yod among the Urko de Shoy could know to be there. And Mohuya made pockets with coverings to put sacred element in, and all the people among the righteous had them. And Edra established censers to offer the smoke of fellowship to anarchists and to each other, and they were stones that they held in their hands. And a woman, who was a descendant of Allah, who was named Ashmareth, because of her inscription among the Erkotis Shoy, established the clans of women, and Baraka said they should show forth the power of godliness in all of their behavior. And the long years of loneliness for Baraka were ended, and it was said by some that she had been yod alone all her days until Mosa established it among the rest of his people. And she was viewed with reverence, and her ways of worship were looked upon as a guide for them all. And she also was looked upon as one of the foremost women of the earth. And all of the righteousness of the people of Anakis prospered, and it was magnified, and their joy in their lives and in the lives of the people of Yod overflowed. And because of the joy of it, the earth shook, and the great grasslands of Anak swayed with gladness. But in the land of Helia, the rocks were rent, and some of them fell upon Kene as he slept, insomuch that he died in the midst of his house. And the Lord has revealed to me that during his life, Kenny was known to have pled with his fellows to persuade them to curtail the extremes of their wickedness. And he feared greatly that the wickedness that was expanding to be out of control would be laid to his charge, and thus ended the life of the only man born in Eden. And it came to pass that one day Enoch went with his little daughter to his place of prayer in Amara, and it was for her a long journey, and she was very young, and as she was playing in the place where her father looked with Urim, she looked up and she spoke by the power of the Spirit and she said, Enoch, why are you not preparing to go upon the mountain? And the words of the little child startled Enoch, for he knew she was not of an age that she could say such words of her own. And when they arrived home, he rehearsed to Edney that which his daughter had said to him. And Edney counted the seasons with Enoch and it was time for the seventh season of the colts of the reeds to appear. And it came to pass that word of it was spread abroad, that Enoch was preparing to go upon the mountain, to gain the understanding of how to divide among the sons of heaven.
for all of the people of Yod. And they all began to pray for his preparation. And they trusted in the Lord that by being obedient, most of the lamb could reveal to Enoch the manner in which they could rightly divide among the sons of heaven. For they greatly desired to know concerning them, for the wicked were pressing them hard, and their need was urgent upon them. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Enoch, chapter 9. Shalom.